Salam everyone. Welcome to my tutorial on coordinate geometry. Now let's say if you have been given a line that has coordinates of 1 comma 5 and 7 comma 1 and the first part is that you need to find the midpoint. So midpoint is exactly at the center of these two points. So midpoint can be calculated through this formula which is x1 plus x2 over 2 comma y1 plus y2 over 2 so you have the two coordinates 1 plus 7 over 2 5 plus 1 over 2 4 comma 3 so the midpoint is 4 comma 3 if you are being asked to calculate the gradient of this line gradient is the change in y over change in x which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so let me call this as x1 y1 x2 y2 so 1 minus 5 over 7 minus 1 minus 2 over 3 now why do you think the gradient is negative the gradient is negative because it has a decreasing slope if your slope if you had a horizontal line the gradient is zero because the slope is zero if you have a in, if you have a positive gradient the graph the line would look like this and if you have a negative gradient it has a decreasing slope it has a negative slope now let's say if i want to evaluate the magnitude or the length of AB I'll use the distance formula which is x2 minus x1 the whole thing square plus y1 minus y2 the whole thing square square root so this comes out to be 36 plus 16 square root 36 plus 16 square root of 52 which is 2 root 13 now finally let's come to finding equation of the line equation of the line can be represented as y equals to mx plus c or you can use a one point formula which is y minus y1 equals to mx minus x1 in order to find the equation of a line all you need is two things one is the gradient of the line and any point so that you can evaluate the uh, this c represent the value of y intercept yeah so if we are asked to find the equation of a b first of all you need to find the gradient so the gradient we just found is minus 2 over 3 and we need a point any point either it could be a or b so let's take a either you can use y equals to mx plus c and find the y intercept so the y value is 5 the gradient is minus 2 over 3 the x value is 1 evaluate c from here and you will get C comes out to be 17 over 3 so the equation would be y equals to minus 2 over 3 x plus 17 over 3 if you simplify this equation <coughs> you get 3 y plus 2 x equals to 17 it's always better to write in this form now if you were using this equation y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1 it's, a, it's basically the same equation uh, just a different form of writing y minus y1 gradient is minus 2 over 3 x minus x1 rewrite this equation you get 3y minus 15 equals to minus 2x plus 2 3y plus 2x equals to 17 all right now, now 
two lines are parallel if their gradients are same okay so if i work out the gradient and they are equal then the two lines are said to be parallel two lines are perpendicular if the their product of the gradient is equal to minus one so let's work it out gradient <coughs> gradient of cd would be 1 minus 3 over 4 minus 1 which is minus 2 over 3 gradient of ab would be 1 minus 5 over 7 minus 1 which is minus 4 over 6 and you simplify this you get it so gradient of ab is equal to gradient of cd therefore both lines are parallel to each other over here if you find gradient of ab it's 1 minus 5 over 7 minus 1 minus 2 over 3 and gradient of cd is 3 minus 6 over 4 minus 6 so minus 3 over minus 2 which is positive 3 over 2 if i multiply the gradient of ab and gradient of cd and if this comes out to be equal to minus 1 then i can say that my two lines are perpendicular to each other so gradient of ab was minus 2 over 3 gradient of cd is 3 over 2 if you simplify this you get minus 1 now in questions when you know one the if the question says that the two lines are perpendicular and you can you can easily find the gradient of ab which is minus 2 over 3 all right so you can notice that the gradient of the perpendicular line is the negative reciprocal of the gradient of ab so if this is minus 2 over 3 the gradient of cd is plus 3 over 2 if the gradient of ab was 5 then the gradient of cd would have been minus 1 over 5 it's the negative reciprocal now <coughs> now let's start let's study some chord, some shape properties all right we know that if we have straight lines and if that line is horizontal there is no slope hence the gradient of this line must be equal to zero if we have any perpendicular line that is parallel to the y-axis the gradient of this line is undefined and any lines that have a gradient in between so let's say if you have a line with a of this shape this has a positive gradient it's increasing the value of the function is increasing over here but the gradient is constant the value of the function does increase the y value keeps on increasing as you increase the values of x so the change in y with respect to change in x is positive so the gradient of such lines are, is greater than zero and vice versa the gradient of these lines with a downward slope is negative the gradient is not decreasing the gradient is constant but it has a downward slope that's why the gradient is negative now this gradient this is change in y and this is change in x right if you the trigonometric ratio that you can use is tan theta over change in y over change in x and change in y over change in x is nothing but y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 which is just the gradient so tan theta is equal to the gradient and if you are being asked to find the angle that this line makes with the x axis you can take tan inverse of the value of the gradient so let's talk about triangles these are the tr three triangles equilateral isosceles and scalene triangle equilateral triangle is a triangle in which all sides are equal and all angles are equal and 60 degree 
if you drop a perpendicular from this vertex to this base it it will bisect firstly it will be a perpendicular bisector it will the line this line would be perpendicular and it will bisect this length into two segments equal segments and this would be the midpoint of these two points if we have isosceles triangle and isosceles triangle is a triangle in which two sides are equal and their adjacent angles are also equal which you can refer to as the base angles so if you drop a perpendicular bisector it will also bisect the line this line into two equal halves then we have a scaling triangle in which all sides are different and all angles are different okay now let's say we know that the area of the triangle is half into base into height when this height is exactly perpendicular to the base but what what if we have any type of triangle be it a equilateral triangle scalene triangle or isosceles triangle and we have been given the coordinates you can use the shoelace formula to calculate the area of the triangle for example let's say this is 2,5 1,3 and let's say 6,2 for example and you need to find the area of this triangle using this formula i'll let you i'll tell you how to use this formula so half mod sine first of all you write the coordinates as it is so x1 x2 sorry x1 y1 then you write the second coordinate then you write the third coordinate and then if it's a three sided figure meaning it's a triangle then you repeat the first again if it ha it would have been a quadrilateral there you then you would have got x1 x2 x3 x4 all the four coordinates then you would have repeated the first again and this is how you multiply that is why it's known it's known as a shoelace formula because you multiply it like this x1 would be multiplied by y2 x2 would be multiplied by y3 x3 would be multiplied by y1 so half the product of x1 y2 plus x2 y3 plus x3 y1 and you add, you sum them up minus the product of x2 y1 plus x3 y2 plus x1 y3 so if i use this form if these with my values 2 5 1 3 6 2 and i'll repeat 2 5 once more so first of all i'll multiply it diagonally 1 over 2 mod 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2 plus 30 minus the product of 5 18 the sum of 5 18 and 4 work this out and you get 11 so 1 over 2 mod of 11 if somehow you were getting a negative number in the over here just drop the minus sign because you know very well that the area cannot be negative so the area is 11 over 2 unit square okay now let's say you have by the way you already know this property that the sum of the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the opposite two interior angles so alpha plus beta is equal to theta how how does this happen see this angle would be 180 minus beta plus alpha and we know that if a st 
straight line is there then the angles are supplementary to each other meaning if you add both angles they must be equal to 180 so if you simplify this you get alpha plus beta okay so let's discuss these shapes if we have a square is a side a square is a quadrilateral all right so sabse pehle we will be discussing quadrilaterals all quadrilaterals are four sided figure and let's and the sum of the interior angles is 360 degree let's say if you have a square as we know square is square have all sides equal the opposite sides are parallel this side and this side parallel the diagonals are equal in length and bisect each other at 90 degree which means they will bisect each other at 90 degree diagonals have share a common midpoint so for example if this is a diagonal and uh, diagonal a b a a c and b d share a common midpoint in rectangle you have opposite sides as equal and parallel so this side is parallel to this side this side is equal and parallel to this side all angles are 90 degree all right diagonals are equal and bisect each other now these diagonals are not bisecting each other at 90 degree but they bisect each other meaning if the two diagonals will cross each other this length and this length are equal this length and this length will be equal so that is the meaning of bisecting a diagonal and they share a common midpoint so if you know the coordinates of this a and if you know the coordinates of b you can work out the midpoint and if you know the coordinates of c and you are being asked to find the coordinates of d you can also work work out the coordinates of d using the same midpoint so let's discuss about rhombus a rhombus is a figure that has all sides equal all right opposite sides are parallel meaning this side is parallel to this side and this side is parallel to this side however diagonals are not equal so the length of this diagonal is not equal to the length of this diagonal but the diagonals bisect each other at 90 degree meaning if the two diagonals cross this line bd will be bisected into two parts and this line ac would be bisected into two equal parts and they will cross each other at 90 degrees so you can say that a right angle triangle can be formed over here so all the properties of a right angle triangle may apply would apply and opposite angles are equal meaning this angle is equal to this angle angle bcd would be equal to angle bad the diagonals bisect the angle as well so let's say if the total angle was 30 the diagonal this diagonal is bisecting the angle and the value of this would be let's say if the total angle was 30 this would be 15 15 this would be 15 15 and we can also realize this that this over here forms an isosceles triangle therefore these two angles would also be equal and these diagonals also share a common midpoint so the same concept if you know the coordinates of a and c you can work out the coordinates of m and if you know b and you are being asked to evaluate the coordinates of d you can work through the midpoint and get the coordinates of d the area of rhombus is given by half the area of rhombus is given by half times d1 which is the length of this diagonal times d2 which is the length of this diagonal all right so you can use if you know this angle you know these lengths you can work out the diagonal using cosine rule okay 
and if you know this length this length and this angle you can work out the diagonal length bd the two diagonals won't be equal because the angle is different this angle is different than this angle therefore the two diagonals are of different length and if you are asked to work out the area it will be half times d1 the diagonal ac times diagonal bd the next figure is a parallelogram a parallelogram have opposite sides parallel and equal so ab is parallel ba is parallel to cd and equal to cd ad is parallel and equal to bc the diagonals bisect each other meaning the diagonals will be split it into half therefore m is the midpoint they and they share a common midpoint and the area of this parallelogram is given by half times this length times the vertical height from d to this base c the next figure is a kite this is how a kite look like two pairs of adjacent sides are equal this length and this length is equal this length and this adjacent length are equal so two pairs of adjacent sides are equal the longer diagonal which is this diagonal bisect the shorter diagonal which is this diagonal so if it is bisecting meaning it is making this shorter diagonals break broken down into two exact halves so this length is equal to this length and they bisect at 90 degree so you can have four right angle triangles over here and the longer diagonal which is this it bisects the angle so same concept so if this total angle was 30 this angle would be half and half all right if this angle was 60 this would be 30 and 30 now let's come to trapezium a trapezium is a figure that has two parallel sides and two non parallel sides okay so a single pair of opposite sides are parallel and the area of a quadrilateral is given by half times sum of parallel sides times height meaning it sum of parallel sides meaning the length this length is a this length is b so a half times a plus b times the vertical height in between that's your height so you can work out the area of the trapezium this way or if you have been given coordinates let's say aapko a pata hai b c and d ke coordinates pata hai then you can also apply shoelace formula all right it's the same formula but since we are using it for a quadrilateral we will be having four coordinates this time and the first one would be repeated and the same procedure as we discussed upward thank you for watching this video